Kaki, Mixed Signal Circuit Design, and the topic is Phase Locked Loop Module 4. To deliver this session, we have here Krishnan KR, who is an assistant professor in the electronics department. He got DTEC from Kusat. He did his MTech in VLSI design from NITK Suratkal, and presently he is pursuing his PhD in Kusat. Device characterization, control systems engineering, etc., are some of his areas of interest. He has an overall teaching experience of over 18 years, and it is a great pleasure having you for today. And I, on behalf of SAP, would like to welcome you, sir, to the session. Also, I welcome all the attendees to the session. And uh, one more thing. Attendees, uh, please know that you can avail the Q&A option available on your screen to post your doubts. And uh, those doubts will be answered later in the session. The option is available near the chat window in the form of three dots. You can see it there. And so you can make use of that option for posting your doubts and all. So, so that's it. And uh, so let's start the session. Thank you. And over to you, sir. Thank you, Sridhi. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear students. Here, the topic to be covered in this session is the phase lock loop under module 4 of the collective post mixed signal circuit design. And the Face lock loops are finding, and uh, you have studied the answer in your uh, lower semesters. And in this subject, we are going to approach this design in a VLSI perspective. And before going into the details of this space lock loop on our session, let me introduce the flow of the seminar. And we'll begin with an introduction to phase log loop. And immediately after the introduction, I will touch some of the applications of phase log loop. It is uh, needed there. That is why I am uh, introducing the applications in the very first slide itself. And uh, then there is an evolution behind the refinement of this log loop I will explain briefly that evolution of the phase log loop and the major concept or the major principle of this phase log Loop is the concept of phase looping, and it will be introduced in detail. The condition for phase lock or the condition to be satisfied by the entire system to have a locked condition of the input and output frequencies. And uh, Uh, then the PLL uh, 
in its totality the block diagram level will be explained and later but uh, the individual components will be explained with emphasis to the phase detector i introduced and later see then go calculate phase error and system level uh, approach will be uh, done and from that we will go we'll find out the type of the system find out the order of the system and uh, then we will go for the characteristic equation from there we will evaluate the damping ratio and the natural frequency of operation and finally we will uh, find a relationship between the cutoff frequency of the uh, low pass filter and how the selection of this low pass filter is going to affect the operation of the PLL in its entire that is the aim of this session okay let me go to the next slide so uh, the uh, phase lock loop the concept of phase lock loop is introduced in the early 1930s and a big basic block diagram was prepared in the mid 1930s and even now even uh, after a near century that basic block diagram is being used for the implementation of pll in the, the in the uh, initial stage the pll's were implemented in the discrete format whereas in this era uh, the latest pll is available in the market with Uh, around 45 nanometer uh, CMOS technology. So the basic block diagram it is remaining the same, and there are additions. There are uh, additions in the sense the uh, different blocks are improvised by uh, different types of algorithms, and that is be being uh, incorporated into the design. And the second point, the it is continue the continuous challenging the designers. the implementation and the realization of pls even after uh, an year century of its conceptualization it is continuing to challenge the designers so the challenges are implement are in implementing the design and different technology modes and processes as you may be aware uh, we we uh, are and now or the, in the academic level we are now having around uh, 45 nanometer processes available and at your lab at our labs and uh, when the technology got shrink from 90 nanometer to 65 nanometer or 45 nanometer this is even though the circuit is remaining the same the transistor characterization is a little bit uh, difficult and we have to characterize the transistors first to suit the operations of all the basic blocks of the pll and then those uh, circuits needs to be incorporated in the uh, pll design so it is a challenging task as the technology gets shrunk from say 65 nanometer to 45 nanometer we have to rework everything every analysis needs to be reworked every circuit needs to be reworked every layout needs to be reworked so it is a challenging task as far as the designers are and uh, 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 also 
the characterization of the circuits for different uh, applications are uh, the steps for the characterization are different for example uh, pls are used for block generation in microprocessor and also they are used for frequency synthesis itself the application may sound similar but the characterization of the pll for these two applications are entirely different so that is also a challenge a challenging task as far as the designers are concerned so the underlying uh, design issues in uh, different applications or in various applications are are uh, amply uh, or uh, they are having the synchronization of the clock and the data in all these applications will be detrimental to the operation of that and their system itself so we have to make sure that the uh, clocks are are very accurate and pll can uh, help us or pll can be employed to ensure the accuracy of clocks and also other uh, sources of signals which are to be used in these applications and coming to the communication side we are having the uh, radio frequency and wireless transmitters uh, frequency source then we need not go for uh, different uh, frequency sources having different frequencies but instead we can use a single stable frequency source and the different sub circuits of this uh, the complex circuit may be using different frequencies which can be derived from a uh, master stable oscillator and with the help of this plns and that is at this the frequency multiplication and frequency synthesis is used to generate accurate and precise frequencies very fine steps as required in wireless transmitters so uh, say uh, for, uh, to 900 megahertz you have to shift your frequency from uh, 110 megahertz to 900 megahertz in say steps of 60 megahertz each and that can be accomplished with the help of or by configuring the pln as a frequency in the size and uh as we know the uh, entire electronic uh, industry is towards the digital end and the uh, digital circuits are having the problem associated with the skew of clocks and data as well as the uh, jitter that is happening to the circuits and with this phase lock loops we can have a very good reduction in the uh, skew of uh clocks and so as the data and also the pls can be used to suppress data and uh, we can have the phase lock clock recovery using pls so uh, this is what the uh, basic block diagram of a pll is and i have returned something called an evolution so the phase lock loop evolution what is the significance of that evolution and the basic uh, definition of a pll is that it is a feedback system that compares the output phase with the input phase that is what is being done in a pll so the input block should be able to compare the output from the phase lock loop as well as the input that is applied to the Block. and uh, 
the detector circuit which accomplishes this job of comparing the phases of the input and the feedback signal is called a phase so you can see a forward path and a feedback path in the cross loop system so essentially the pll is a uh, feedback system so it is having a forward path and a feedback in the forward path so it is implemented by using a phase detector and a voltage controlled oscillator and coming to the voltage controlled oscillator voltage controlled oscillator is a signal source whose output frequency will be dependent on the input dc voltage that is input dc voltage that is supplied. that is by varying the input average voltage you can vary the frequency of oscillations at the output voltage control and uh, be to be specific this input voltage control voltage to the voltage control oscillator needs to be a pure dc that is uh, no high frequency ripple components are allowed so we have to suppress the ripple components to the maximum possible extent and the basic diagram shows a phase detector whose output is directly connected to the input of the voltage control oscillator but the phase detector output is noisy in nature it is having the low frequency component the dc component as well as high frequency component so what is needed at the input of the voltage controlled oscillator as the control voltage is a, is almost a pure dc so obviously what we have to do is to filter the voltage controlled oscillator and the phase detector is there with a low pass filter as a sandwich in between and the phase needs to be monitored continuously and this cannot be done in a manual manner that is what we are employing a feedback control and the feedback path unity gain feedback path provided here is the automatic aspect of this phase lock loop which uh, in no time no time uh, attains the settling phase and uh, the frequency will become stable and now what is the concept of phase lock so the principle of a phase lock loop is the phase locking between the input signal and the feedback signal and the feedback signal is the output from the vcu and input signal is what we are giving externally to the phase detector and uh, have a look at the waveforms shown in figure a so that is a reference clock it is a reference clock which is uh, represented here for the explanation of this uh, concept of phase lock and vck is the reference clock and uh, next one it is the v vcu that is the output from the vcu and now we are going to compare this clock the uh, clock waveform and uh, v vcu in uh, the initial uh, portion itself you can see there is a phase lag of delta t existing between the uh, clock reference clock and the output of the vc and uh, vc output lags the reference clock by a time is equal to delta t and now the phase locking refers to the elimination of this error actually phase locking is is the is a process by which this error in the phase is eliminated theoretically speaking I, we have to eliminate this error to zero but ideally there will be a constant error. but the frequency will be catched up even though there is a finite error in phase the frequencies of this clock reference clock and the vco output will be catched up and look at the second figure figure b the uh, how can how we can align the output phase of the vco with the phase of the reference initially you are having a vck and vvco apart by delta t second say seconds 
and there is a control voltage v control and this v control is that voltage is provided to the voltage controlled oscillator to attain the phase flow and at t is equal to t1 the uh, difference in phase exists between the reference for vc k and the vc output vvc and now can you notice any difference between the frequencies of vc k and vvc obviously there is a difference in the frequency the clock frequency is remaining the reference clock frequency is remaining same whereas the vco output frequency is gradually changed and this vco output frequency the gradual change in the vco output frequency is on the basis of this control voltage generated or applied to the voltage controlled oscillator so as and when this control voltage is applied to the voltage controlled oscillator is derived from the output of the phase detector the frequency of the output frequency of the voltage controlled oscillator starts changing and this change in frequency in the output of the voltage controlled oscillator happens until the uh, frequency of this voltage controlled oscillator output gets catched up with the reference clock frequency so at t is equal to uh, in the figure it is uh, uh, shown that the uh, frequency gets catched up frequency gets catched up at this uh, particular point say at t is equal to t1 the frequency catching up process is over and now the uh, frequencies of voltage controlled oscillator output of the voltage controlled oscillator and the reference clock is low and now the phase locking is over and the vco control input v control initiates and control the gradation in the frequency of vco output and this gradation is done in a such a manner that there is a perfect locking of the frequencies of the reference clock voltage and the voltage control so this is what the uh, the concept of phase locking is in the uh, phase lock now how can we attain this phase lock so the uh, principle behind the phase locking is a gradation in frequency and in order to have the gradation in the frequency the following integration of phi is equal to integral omega 0 plus k vco into v control dt is to be happen and how can we make sure that this integration is taking place in the uh, PLL or phase lock loop. So this needs to be done at the VCO level and essentially the voltage controlled oscillator needs to carry out this frequency gradation in the form of this integration and hence the P VCO block of the phase lock loop is essentially an integrator so, and that integrator has to perform this function of integration where the frequency gradation is carried out so that the phase locking is attained. Now to attain the rising edges of VVCO with VC. What do you mean by aligning the rising edges of VVC with VC is what the phase locking, the process of phase locking. So what are the steps to be followed so that the rising edges of VCO output and the reference clock can be aligned. The VCO frequency, step one, the VCO frequency is stepped up to a higher value at is equal to one. As a result, the faster phase accumulation results are shown in the previous step. Then the phase error starts diminishing in a gradual manner and the phase error vanishes at t is equal to t2 and 
from there onwards the vvco the output of vcu and vvc vcp the reference clock continues to remain aligned provided the original value of v control corresponding to this frequency locking or the phase locking is preserved as and when there is a change in v control then we should understand that output frequency of the vco has already changed and it is getting compared with the reference and the phase detector has changed its value so the v control the control voltage in the vco got changed and now the frequency is not in the lock form okay uh, so we have begun this uh, discussion with the stepping up of the vco frequency and the same can be attained with the stepping down of the frequency of the vco to a lower value then in a nutshell the essence we can say phase alignment can be achieved only by a temporary frequency change we need to have really a temporary frequency change so that the phase alignment is uh, obtained and the phase alignment task is achieved into two steps that is we have to momentarily change the vco frequency it will change and we have to compare the phases of vco output and the reference signal to ensure this that is what is explained as and what is the phase lock condition phase lock condition means in order to get the loop to be locked the difference in the phase of the input signal and the feedback signal must be a constant and preferably very very small this uh look at the explanation i this is described to be a constant it is not uh, uh, the difference it is not described as zero but it should be a value which is close to the phase difference be constant and it should be as small as possible that means the difference in phase is not changing with respect so we can write mathematically or express this mathematically as the rate of change in phase difference the rate of change in phase difference is equal to that is d by dt of phi out minus phi in is equal to and we know the rate of change of angular displacement is the angular frequency so d phi by dt is the angular frequency omega the angular frequency corresponding to the output phase of vco is omega out and the angular frequency corresponding to the input signal it is omega in so the condition for phase locking is the angular frequencies should be preserved the input frequency and the output frequency should be analyzed we have started it from uh, a condition that the phase difference should be constant and should be as small as possible so that constant when uh, applied with a derivative function will be equal to zero resulting in the condition that frequencies of the vco output and the input signal should be analyzed so we can say when log PLL generates an output. PLL generates an output processing exactly the same frequency as it is input with a slightly small phase. So input and output frequencies are in a locked condition, and there can be there can be a very small phase difference existing between the input and output frequencies. This so. the uh, two step phase alignment task is this uh, is uh, represented in the uh, figure and phase detector and the vco i have already explained it and now you know what is the need for lpf and uh, for your reference i have included this slide what is the need for low pass filter okay for that let's have a look at the uh, transfer characteristics of 
the phase detector. To answer characteristics of the phase detector, it is a plot between phase difference versus the average output voltage of this phase detector. So, what is the phase, di phase difference? It is in the x axis and it is represented as delta phi. And in the y axis, we are having V out bar. The representation is of utmost significance. V out bar pertains to the average voltage, it is not any instantaneous voltage. And as the different bills in the positive direction, the average voltage at the output goes the or increases in the positive direction. And the, uh, when the difference is negative, this difference is negative, the average voltage gets built up in the negative direction. Okay. Now you can see that it is almost a straight line, or the, we have to restrict the operation of the phase detector in the linear region itself and so how can we linearize it that is another task and we will discuss it later so here have a look at this one here at this point this difference is equal to zero output voltage average output voltage is equal to zero and it builds up and the phase difference increases and also it builds down when phase difference increases and this uh, explained here in this one Uh, look at this uh, circuit implementation of uh, can be used. So operation can be utilized. And what is XOR operation? When inputs to an XOR gate are different then the output will be equal to a logic high. And when the input is same, the output of the XOR will be at logic low. So, 0, 0 corresponds to 0, 1, 1 corresponds to 0, 0, 1 and 1, 1, 0 corresponds to a logic high. So, we are making use of that principle here, V1 of T and V2 of T and V2 of T lacks V1 of T by delta phi. Now, look at the output. The maximum value of the output is plus VDD is not changing, but instead you can see there is a pulse corresponding to the difference in the phase between V1 and V2. As the phase difference increases or decreases, width of this pulse decreases or increases. Increases, which is a maximum from pi to 2 pi, it increases. And in the negative direction also, from 0 to minus pi, it increases, maximum voltage is equal to V out bar, and from thereafter, it gets decreased to minus uh, 0 at minus. So this is the uh, uh, V out versus delta phi for phi ranging from 0 to 2 pi. That is a complete cycle. Uh, phase difference. So, the phase detector is a circuit where its average output voltage VO is linearly proportional to the phase difference between linearly proportional to the phase difference between its inputs. Linear, that is the linearity that is built or that is uh, necessary from a phase difference. The ideal linear transfer function as shown in figure. And if the transfer function is not linear, then we have to limit the operation of the phase detector to that part of the transfer function where the uh, operation is linear. And uh, the transfer function process uh, origin for delta phi is equal to zero. And the slope of this transfer function is called KPD, the gain of this phase detector. And it is expressed in volts per radians. And 
an exo phase detector is the simplest phase detector and its operation is explained. And now I am coming to the next two blocks ECO and LCO. So, what is a voltage controlled oscillator? Voltage controlled oscillator is different from our fundamental oscillators. How it is different? Here, the output frequency is controllable, it is controlled with the help of an input voltage. As and when we change the input voltage, then the output frequency from the VCO changes. And the design of this VCO is essentially similar to the design that is employed for our fundamental uh, oscillators. And it needs to satisfy the Burkhausen criteria for sustained oscillation. And the uh, Burkhausen criteria for sustained oscillation states that a modulus of if A is the forward path factor and beta is the feedback, feedback path factor, then modulus of A beta should be equal to 1 and phase angle of this one should be equal to 1. Then uh, coming to the low pass filter, the low pass filter is used to filter the output of this uh, phase detector and the phase detector circuit is now in. DC components and also DC, near DC and also high frequency range. We given to VCO should be essentially a DC, it should be quiet and be steady. So to remove that, that you employ a low pass. Okay. And the low pass filter implemented in most technologies can be uh, a simple RC, it can range from a simple RC filter section to an active low pass filter. It depends on the accuracy that is to be uh, extracted from the phase law. So, for the laboratory or academic uh, activities, we can uh, make use of the RC low pass filter and for precise applications, the active low pass filters are. How can we calculate the phase error that is resulting in the PLR? So, uh, this plot pertains to the calculation of this phase error, and uh, the plot which is shown, waveform shown in the left hand side of this figure, it is waveforms when PLL is in the lower dimension. So, this is the phase detector output voltage and this is the filtered voltage under the low pass filter showing some voltage. and we have to eliminate the ripple to the maximum voltage. So, how to find out the phase error in a phase lock loop? We have to construct the VCO and phase detector characteristics. So, what is the VCO characteristics and what is the phase detector characteristics? Output of the VCO is the uh, signal that is generated, and the input to the VCO is the one that is evolved from the phase detector after low pass filtering. So the transfer function of or the transfer characteristics of your uh, voltage controlled oscillator is a plot between controlled voltage and the output, and it is uh, a linear plot and it starts from omega 0 and as we control varies what happens this frequency varies to uh, some new values and at omega is equal to omega 1 corresponding to the control voltage v1 the phase gets low and that is what is happening the voltage controlled and regarding the phase detector the transfer characteristics is of the phase detector is a plot between the input phase difference and the output voltage in front. Here, the output voltage is the average of the pulses that is. Then, here, have a look at it. When phase difference is equal to zero, output average voltage is. Again, it is a straight line. Now, if the input and output frequencies are log, then the log frequency is represented as mega one. And the required oscillator controlled voltage for this log frequency is V1. And this log 
this voltage V1 is to be generated by the phase. So how, what is the condition? Omega out is equal to omega 0 plus A V C O into V control. Omega out is equal to omega 0 plus K V C O into V control. So omega 0 is the difference, the DC value. Here it is not the DC value, the shift in difference and is omega 0 plus the uh, expression for this particular line. And this line is having a slope of K V C O and the x axis we are having the parameter v control. So, it is essentially the representation of a line with which is not starting from the origin, it is having some other values. Omega out is equal to omega 0 plus a. We can have an expression for v out bar, here it is represented as v p d bar and v p d bar is equal to here the y intercept is equal to 0 and it starts from 0. So, VPD bar is equal to the slope of this line that is KPD and the uh, independent variable delta phi. So, the expression is of a straight line that is VPD bar is equal to KPD into delta phi. And we are going for a back substitution. Back substitution means the, we can find out what is V1. So, V1 we have to find it out. So, what is V1? V1 is V control. So, replace V control with V1. And obtain an expression for V1 as omega 1 minus omega 0 divided by A B C O. And this omega out is equal to omega 1 and V control is equal to V1 when the slope happens. So V1 is equal to omega out omega 1 minus omega 0 divided by A B C. And similarly, we can have an expression for phi 0. Phi 0 is equal to V1 divided by KPD from this equation. V1 divided by KPD. V1 is already found out and phi 0 is equal to omega 1 minus omega 0 divided by KPD into KVCO. KPD is the slope corresponding to phase detector and KVCO is the slope corresponding to uh, the voltage control oscillator, the characteristics of the voltage control oscillator. Phase error is dependent on input frequency is dependent on the product KPD and KVC and in the initial slides it is uh, mentioned that the phase error should be a constant preferably should be very very small. So, how can we minimize this phase error? The minimization of the phase error can be uh, carried out by maximizing the product KPD into KVC. We have to maximize the product and without affecting the stability of the and that is how the phase error can be now so uh, it is the block level schematic that we have formulated the theory behind the condition or the theory behind the concept of the locking and now it is mathem mathematically modeled and we are having an expression and from this expression, we found out the parameters that needs to be controlled so that this phase is minimal. Now, how to implement these blocks, the phase detector, the low pass filter, and the oscillator, voltage controlled oscillator in a single step. So this figure that is uh, copied from Rasavi, B Rasavi, the textbook on analog CMOS integrated circuit design. And uh, here it is the XOR gate. You know, this XOR gate is the phase detector. And in your uh, VLSI design paper that you have studied in S7, yeah, in S7, uh, you have studied the realization of gates in different uh, logical styles. So you can adopt any one of the logic style to get the uh, XOR gate implemented in the same step. And then comes the low pass filter, which is here it is an uh, RC section. The resistance it will be uh, realized using the silicon, and the capacitance will be realized using the MOS capacitor. That means the MOS transistor itself will be used for realization of this capacitor. So, 
you will find out the cutoff frequency and you will uh, design an rc section and so that you can extract the uh, uh, dc component of this is the row and then comes the voltage controlled oscillator so the voltage controlled oscillator shown here is a uh, is in a cross coupled form here we are using two transistors say m1 and m2 and m1 and m2 are having their drains connected to the uh, inductor and uh, this forms the tank circuit and the tank circuit is used for the frequency and now if we are using the barrector diodes here for the frequency and the principle employed here is the negative GMLC tank circuit for uh, the oscillation. Negative GMLC. So it is a uh, bit wider topic uh, that is the realization of this negative GMLC. Uh, uh, GM means the transconductor, L is the inductance, and C is the capacitor. And now, uh, earlier this inductor fabrication was a tedious process in using the VLSI uh, technologies. But now, inductor fabrication to some extent is possible. The inductors can be housed within the integrated circuit. So, this is the simple realization that we are letting using the most technology. Now, once more, the phase. and the voltage control uh, try to uh, draw this it's, uh, get uh, familiarized to the differential operation that is happening the output you are uh, taking as a different shell output board. So please uh, try to point out this difference. The output uh, is a this GM, negative GMLC oscillator, oscillator based. Now, the analysis of this meal. And uh, what is most important is uh, it is able to, or it is very simple. Uh, schematic early, uh, uh, do the simulation and simple PLL by you guidance of mental graphics of like but in order to match the frequency that is uh, desired for our application We have to do so many analysis and you have to control so many parameters and the capacitance that is present. Factor output necessarily needs to be amplified, and the amplification factor is represented by KPD. And KPD is familiar to you because it is used in the transfer function of this uh, or uh, transfer character phase, de uh, phase detector. And uh, there we represented it as the slope of that particular linear uh, graph. Now, the 
A second one is a first order low pass filter. I am taking a simple uh, low pass filter. It's a first order low pass filter with a transfer function. A common transfer function for the first order one is 1 by 1 plus S by omega LPF, where omega LPF will be minus 3 dB bandwidth of uh, your low pass filter. And now the third one it is the voltage control oscillator. So previously, I have mentioned that it is an integrator. Voltage controlled oscillator is necessarily an integrator. So, what is the transfer function of an integrator? When it comes to the integration operation in the time domain, it is represented as integral of a function. And when it is uh, transformed into the Laplace domain, it is 1 by S that is the integration of. Here also, you are having a, the S in the denominator. And what is this KVCO? Again, uh, I have explained it in the transfer of voltage control and KVCO is the slope of that particular uh, transfer. So, the VCO which is modeled as a low pass filter or an integrator is like this KVCO divided by this. and there is the feedback path, uniquely feedback path from output to so this is the uh, linear model of a simple phase slope field. Now, the analysis of this, so you all have studied the control system theory and now we are going to apply that control system theory into 